And another one was, you're gonna pop that saw. Now that particular saw right there has been pulling a 42 on multiple occasions for some time. And uh, just to dispel any rumors, uh, no, we didn't pop it. The 42 power head is still running. That's a different one. So again, here's the 562 with the Canon bar adapter. Here is an unmodified steel bar. You see that fits right inside there. That takes up the gap on the slender Husqvarna stud. That's the way that works. Now, Canon bar works. That's what they do. They build these adapters specifically for their bars, but also uh, for steel bars to fit the Husqvarna saws. And they've got a bunch of them. They also have it for the Echo. And you see a scribe mark on that particular bar. And, and this is one of my setup bars. Okay, so factory bar, untouched. Now this is the modified bar. Same design using that gauge that I showed you. There we go. And I see that allows full adjustment without taking any links out of your chain anything like that i think there was some confusion as to what was going on in the video and i think this explains it uh, pretty well and if it doesn't it's a it's a matter of numbers uh, the interior of the husvarna hole where the stud goes through measures nine millimeters and that's on the shoulder the unthreaded portion measures nine millimeters that's what you've got to work with now here's the steel bar stud supposedly that they all interchange and this is the part that would go into the crankcase it measures eight millimeters so that's smaller than the crankcase on the steel so no Eight millimeters, the unthreaded portion. Eight millimeters. And again, uh, repetition for uh, emphasis. Uh, nine millimeters on that shoulder on the Husqvarna. So that, no, the studs do not interchange. So just a real quick shot of the bench here. Uh, maybe... A flash into something to come uh, you see that right there I'm referring to this crankcase you may or may not know what that is and obviously these and and then today's subject um, there were some comments that came up in the full length video about the uh, adapting steel bars to a 562 XP Husqvarna uh, we see the studs there and the part number, the part number 52289-3801, and those are the bar studs. They press in through the oil tank, just like they do on the 372, uh, just like they do on the 394, just like they do on the 395, etc. and so on. A whole lot of Husqvarna saws do that. Uh, the measurements of those studs make it impossible to run a steel bar on a Husqvarna saw without an adapter or without uh, something to take up that gap. Now, the steel large mount bar has a 12.1 millimeter gap according to most measurements. So here is the Husqvarna stud that presses in and you see it just falls through there. So there's no way to run that on the saw, on the Husqvarna, without an adapter. Some people seem to misunderstand that. There's a little better view. Uh, this is an unmodified steel bar, as we've already said. And there are the studs out of the 562. Inside, inside the steel bar groove, unmodified. Okay. Um, so here is the steel bar stud. Now, that threads into the case, and the groove of the bar rides on that collar, just like you see it there, but it's uh, perpendicular like so, and that 
bar rides that collar on the stud. Now you can uh, buy a nine millimeter stud to run Husky bars on a steel saw. That's not what the video was about. The video was about adapting steel bars for the 562. So there you got it, you know. And then uh, commentary was made about the alterations that I made and that nobody would buy those bars. They were not resellable. I found that very humorous as well. And before I remove this bar and show you a modified bar, notice this. See that? Okay. Um, it fits perfectly. That's a factory gauge. Okay. Hang on just a minute. Okay. Here is uh, the modified bar. Uh, modified by me. Get her to focus. Somewhat. So, same gauge. This is modified. And it is accurate to within microns. And this bar has been modified. And I'll overlay the, the factory untouched bar over it. Alright, so here I have uh, laid the modified bar over the factory bar. I'm going to set that gauge inside there. You see that? Okay. Pull that out. Set it in the modified bar. There you go. And like I said, this is accurate to within microns. It looks factory, as good as factory. There's nothing hurt there. The structural integrity of that bar is not hurt. But there that is. Now let's look at how these studs go in the saws. So uh, here we have uh, a steel. Got several steels here. We'll look at them all. So the bar rides on that collar. It's 12.1 millimeter collar. Okay. The holes through the Husqvarna crankcase are that size. And it's a press in. It's a press fit. It's not threaded. And this goes in from the inside. And then the square hex fits in on the crankcase and the molding in the crankcase so that that doesn't spin when you tighten it up. Uh, the steel is threaded in. So interestingly enough, here are two 660s, and my timing wheel indicators ride on those collars. Uh, you might say I designed them that way. And, I mean, you just look back through the channel and you can see that. You look back through the channel and you can see most of the information that I presented here today as well. So right there in that square hole is the back side of the stud. It presses in through the inside of the oil tank. Right there you can see it clearly now. Oh, no, there are no studs that adapt the steel bar to the Husqvarna 5 series, 562 in particular, saw. There are not. So again, here's the 562 with the Canon bar adapter. Here is an unmodified steel bar. You see that fits right inside there. That takes up the gap on the slender Husqvarna stud. That's the way that works. Now, Canon bar works. That's what they do. They build these adapters specifically for their bars, but also uh, for steel bars to fit the Husqvarna saws. And they've got a bunch of them. They also have it for the Echo. And you see a scribe mark on that particular bar. And, and this is one of my setup bars. Okay. So factory bar untouched. So no, uh, all these studs are not the same. And no, you can't just swap out a $4 stud and run a steel bar on a Husqvarna and a saw. No. Uh, Everything you see on this bench and under the bench and all over the bench is steel. Uh, here are the studs. Here's the Husqvarna stud. The diameter of the stud that presses into the case on the Husqvarna is larger and it is not threaded versus the steel bars. So no, they don't all interchange. And like we've already shown, the the squared portion 
of the Husqvarna bar stud is the same size, basically, as the groove on the steel bar. So all of that information is misinformation in those uh, comments there. And um, I was asked to address a lot of misinformation, and we'll do it little by little. So, no, there are no $4 studs that allow you to run a steel bar on a Husqvarna saw. And that's what Canon Bar Works is in the business of doing, building a high-quality adapter that sits on the shoulder of the Husqvarna stud to run the 12.1 millimeter bar slots. Well, another thing I want to bring to point, um, now that part number there you see on that bar, nobody ever commented on that. Nobody ever run it. Run that part number. Uh, commentary on the 400 video about smoking the clutch while running this 42 inch bar. Also, I noticed that oil gallery right there. Uh, I read and see a lot about guys modifying those oil galleries. Right there's that one. Uh, in the same manner, when you modify an oil gallery, incorrectly it's just like porting a saw incorrectly you can ruin the flow on that bar uh i had this on the 400 and the 562 the 562 has a 2017 uh, oiler on it it has the late model clutch but uh it will oil that 42 with that setup right there so keep that in mind run that part number for me um as an addendum to the addendum, a lot of times people comment and they kind of like speak out loud without thinking, uh, without doing their research. And I think that's what happened uh, in multiple places. I had a short there talking about which uh, M-Tronic saw do we have. That was the title of the short. And the guy said, you can tell by the holes for the carburetor screws on the cylinder cover. It wasn't a matter of whether or not it's an M-Tronic saw, which M-Tronic saw. People are jumping to conclusions. People don't listen. And that's that misinformation that we're talking about. Um, and the same thing uh, with the uh, comments made about the Canon bar adapter and how to go about doing that. Um, people are confused. And if you think I did those bar modifications with a grinder, uh, Mr. Mitchell commented and said that he has, and he's pretty good with a grinder, evidently. That's not how I did it. So a lot of conclusions were jumped to uh, by certain individuals. Uh, and like I say, we tell on ourselves when we talk. So uh, right there's your bar studs. We've shown the dimensions. We've shown the bars as they come from the factory. And after I make my modifications, and... Not everybody does it like I do, okay? I've done them, I've done them round and I've done them square. You can do it either way. So um, that is the addendum to the addendum. So also along those lines, I had folks uh, comment about the 562 vids. Folks that really don't know what's going on and made mention of uh, records and things of that nature referring to the bar as a blade. Uh, you know, all those are telltale signs and red flags as to the nature of the knowledge of the commenters. And uh, sometimes that's what you get, especially in the short format, but normally in the longer format, vids don't get that. I, I suppose that's a sign. And I suppose if we really wanted to, we could drill out some Husqvarna crankcases and build inserts if we wanted to. But I think the Canon bar adapter is a much better idea. So one more time, uh, here is my specialized tool. It's a 12.1 millimeter radius tool. Just for modifying steel bars, 12.1 millimeter.